Okay, it's the Matt and Jim show, Matt, Jim, and we're going to talk about putters. We're going to talk about some of the stuff that we made this week, and so it's going to be golf club reviews, golf club repairs, and golf club fittings. All so your scores can go low. Next on What's in My Drawers Golf Talk. Welcome back to What's in My Drawers Golf Talk. Jim McCleary here with Matt, and it's all about What's in My Drawers in the golf shop over there. Hmm. And it's all because old club makers and club fitters are tremendous pack rats, and we do keep a lot of stuff. It was about what's in my drawers. So now this is the channel where, just as I said before, we're going to talk about golf club repairs, reviews, and opinions, all so your scores can go low. All righty. So we're going to get right to it. We had a new winner on the PGA Tour. Not necessarily a new one. He won Second like one, yeah. nine, nine years ago. Yeah. Nine years ago, and Melanotti, and uh, super appeared to be a super nice guy in his acceptance of winning. Uh, did very, very well. I mean, we came down with a two shot lead and even after he had one in the trees on the yeah. last one, so <laughs> not bad. <clears throat> so good for him. Uh, Kelly Norda won again, 10th mm -hmm. time on the tour. Uh, Patrick Harrington won again. I don't even know how many times that is for that cat, yeah. but he's killing it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so <clears throat> a lot of good, a lot of good golf out there if you wanted to watch any of it. And, uh, as far as uh as far as stuff we did we did actually we did a lot uh mrs mcgolf kept me very busy this week and fortunately i didn't download any of it for you because uh i was just lazy and <laughs> and what it was so we did the wilson dyna fours is becoming very very popular it's becoming very, very popular because it works. Okay, once you get all the the transmission and the length and the loft and all that going around, it works. Now, right behind it is the Mizuno 245, and then not to be outdone, uh, the Paradigm Smoke is doing very, very well. For in particular, the High Launch. So those are the three that we have going through here. And uh, so, before we get into the uh, before we, oh, let's talk about, I also cooked some chicken on the grill and did some smash burgers, but I didn't want to take a picture of those either. <laughs> All righty. So before we get into the topic at hand, I wanted to, we're going to talk to you about some fitting results. And I did a little bitty video for you guys. Uh, give me about seven minutes of your time. And it's talking about what the different needs of different golfers are. So let's get started with that. We have three fittings we want to talk about today and the difference of head versus shaft or the team up of them. Now, this is Matt. Matt's a kind of a beginning golfer, as one can see, if we see this, all the different irons that he had hit. And then down here we have the six iron. But we're going to go back to here. This is the Mizuno HM, the hot metal with the Modus 105R. Now, through the testing, we found the 105R worked for him the best. Then it was a battle between either the Dyna Power Forge type club or the Hot Metal or the Hot Metal Pro. So if we go here, Hot Metal Pro is, you know, it's got a nice long one here and two kind of short ones where the Hot Metal itself is way, way more consistent but doesn't have that long bomber. So, but if you're going to look at it, you know, this is the one from a consistency point of view that you would take. So what's the difference? And that's the key of it. So the HM Pro was two yards longer in rollout, but it was also uh, six yards shorter when it came to carry, hitting things about the same. And the reason why it rolled so far is because it had low spin rate. And low spin rate's all good and dandy if you're hitting a driver, but not so much in an iron. So he must have felt much better about this club because all we did was change the head, gained about a mile and a half, hit it exactly the same with more spin, more consistency, hit it further, and landed it pretty much where it should have gone. This was much more representative of what was going on. Now, if you look underneath, he had the Dynapower Forged. It just did not agree with him. And we tried another one, didn't agree with him. And he just really woke up when he hit the HM Pro. That's for, that's for Matt. And it was a good pick. 
So let's move on to the next one. Okay, this is a case where sometimes you don't beat the driver. This is Paul Ray, uh, older gentleman, and what he really liked his uh, Big Bertha 21, but he wanted to see if he couldn't upgrade. And we tried the upgrade maneuver, and we found out that he really liked this Cypher 50. And so what you see here is the BB21 with the Cypher 50, and because we could change this out. His driver had an RCH shaft in it, and then we took his. So we found out his real requirements, and that was the other part. We found out his real requirements and started putting into the differences here. So what we did is we let him hit his driver, and then we hit one with my shaft in it, and he went a little bit further because literally all the spin came out of it. And then what I did is I went back and I remodified his driver to give me the same settings instead of the, what he had, and it turned out he hit it the best. So after a slight modification, a new regrip, uh, he's got a driver that outperforms the rest. All right, on to the next one. All right, this is Joe Robinson. He's a 74-year-old a golfer swinging at 100 mile an hour and mimics two different of the old old school golfers. Uh, one of them, Jack Nicklaus, with, with the... Uh, with the full swing, but his trigger is the same as another golfer that I'm just having a hard time recalling right now. Anyway, what we started off with, if you look here, we started off with his driver, and this is how far he's hitting it, and finding a decent decent contact, not per, not real good, but decent contact. And uh, then we had the Smoke, a Mizuno, and all these different clubs. I'm kind of hang, I'm kind of searching around, and I'm trying to find a pattern they didn't do as good they may have you know went out as far but they didn't do as good so we stopped that then i went to into a little heavier a little bit more uh, stiffer clubs because his pull down was just extraordinarily aggressive and so we went with the nolly and all of a sudden we saw improvement is it worth uh is it six hundred dollars worth of improvement for two or three yards probably not in his eyes so then I decided let's start going a little bit more exotic and got to the Mizuno 240G because he preferred the smaller head look and I put in the Denali Blue which is available to the custom folks like we are and all of a sudden we're starting to see a little bit more. All right, now we're talking four yards four and uh, four yards and four yards. Now is that worth that number? Uh, maybe. And then all of a sudden I said, okay, now we saw that kind of work. Let's go back to the smoke, and now we're starting to see it again, about pretty much the same uh, same results you know, and very similar things, just the spin rate is a little bit lower, and uh, although he was making this thing fading out to the right, it was a little bit too much shaft. So as a, as a Hail Mary, I went back. He liked the Mizuno head, and I said, okay, we're going to get you a 70-gram stiff flex, but we're going to kind of soften it just a tad. And we softened it just a tad, all of a sudden it woke up. And when it woke up, we're talking about at least half of a club, maybe three quarters of a club, very straight. Spin rates are where we want it to go, and he's hitting it very, very well. Now, the other part of that is, yeah, you're hitting it very, very well, except for uh, there's the VRTX Blue, which I thought he would do good with. But there's the Denali, which he hit really, really well with there. But there's the... There's the Acker green shaft. So way tight, way far, and way better. So we ended up going with that particular club. One more. Lauren is a, is a golfer. She's been here before, and uh, her, we got her tuckered out so the driver wasn't working very well. So we, she came back ready to rock and roll, and this was, she brought her club in, and... Uh, this was not her club, but I, but we think we got in this particular area. Anyway, I let her hit her club, and it was down in this neck of the woods. All right, and so we start we started off with the Callaway club, was playing around. Turns out she likes a lighter shaft, and uh, I thought, okay, well here we go. We're going to get a lighter shaft, and as we kept experimenting, we kept getting better and better and better and better, and finally we got back into the Mizuno again the different one and put the blue shaft the vrtx blue with 50 gram all of a sudden it was huge not only was it that good but she was also 
very good with the look at that nice tight pattern right down the groove so anything that the uh, you know anything that puts you down the middle make you go further what's wrong with that right and here's our here's our flights for this one and gotta like that one so what are we talking about here what we're talking about here is a shaft head combination you know everybody's like oh this is the latest greatest shaft and that's all good and dandy but you have to have it fit the way that you pull it back you pull it down and you swing through it's about tempo it's about speed and it's about control also the length of it then once you've got all that figured out then what kind of head does it work with because the where the head the weight could be displaced in this head could make that shaft act a little differently so that's the reason why you got to work it around so so far there was a very successful weekend and uh, the guys the people walked away pretty happy and uh, hopefully their scores go low. Now, let's get back to the Here we go. Okay, so the, the, the golfer I couldn't remember, I asked Matt to help me out, and it was Sam Sneed. Mm -hmm. Sam Sneed had that little knee jerk for a trigger to get him going, so our buddy Joe had a, a Sam Sneed trigger and a Jack Nicholas finish, and uh, it was amazing to see the guy golf and just light it up when uh, when we got it going on. So that wasn't too bad at all. That was a that was a plus. All righty. So uh, here we go with the uh, the topic putters. And if you guys saw the video last week, we're going to kind of take off with the same stuff again. Okay. So as a whole, putters come in at least two varieties. Right. There is a bladed style, and there's a mallet style. So bladed style, that's a, uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. All right. there you go, blade. So bladed style, <laughs> bladed style is just what Matt handed out here, and it looks a lot like that, right? This is the double wide, so it's a little wider. Mm -hmm. If you were to look at the way that this one is made, you see how it's got this extra uh, shelf here? On a normal putter, that would be gone, and that would be the width of it. That's why, hence, double wide. And But this is the Anzer, Anzer style. Every putter company makes one. They all, because it's a great design, it's one that's been accepted throughout the ages, and that's where you go. The next one is a mallet style, and a mallet style is a big brick at the end of a stick. All right, and that's this is one, this is uh, Makefield, and Makefield has it where they've got a lot of weight coming not only in the outside for MOI, but one right down the middle so it can contact the ball. Now, they work on stuff with face, milling and then you can see that it's got this sight line for days on it and that's one of the advantages of a mallet putter is that you can have all this sight line on it and and it helps people align the putt 90 percent of the people when you listen to the instructors will say golfers just can't line up the putt and they can't see the, and why can't you line it up it's because you can't see it and how do you see it well, it's actually having the proper length so that you're over the ball mm -hmm. properly and there's no one there's no one spot. You don't have to be right over top of the ball like this. You can be inside the ball ever so slightly. And depending on if you're wearing glasses or have astigmatism in your eyes, you might find yourself just barely over the ball. That's Those guys are far and few between, but it does exist. So this you got to be in this one spot, negative, it does not happen. All right, so the other the other top the things that we want to talk about <clears throat> is balances of golf clubs. I'm going to go backwards here real quick. Okay. So when typically yeah. what this tends to fit are guys that have that have these paths that do like that. Mm -hmm. All right, and the, the reason that works so well is because of that the toe dangle, right? The toe dangle, and what that allows is the screen door effect, is what they would call, or the Ben Crenshaw. And that's what that is for. Now, what became popular here recently is the the mallet putter. What I mean recently, within the last handful of years, is that it face, face balances, balance. which the face points up to the air. And that was for those guys that go straight back, straight forward. However, if you'd ever look at it, and we did some on the Capto, nobody, nobody goes straight back and straight forward because there is some sort of minor arc in there but the face stays square to the target that's more proper okay that's more proper to what you're seeing so now hand me mine 
And so now to break all the rules and what's going on <laughs> comes lab golf. <laughs> lab golf balances it, what I would call in a toe up target line or whatever in order to do it. And truly, if you were wanting to go, this is that person that golfs like that. All right. And the, what they talk about is it just goes where you aim it. Well, no kidding. <laughs> And then they have a bit of a, a different grip, which we'll go back to here in a moment. All righty. So those are just really, really broad strokes. If you need to go back and look at the video, because I break it down a little bit more. Now, the other part is there's also these different necks that go on there. Matt and I were just talking about that yeah. earlier. Flow necks, Z necks, S necks, plumber's necks, double bends, mm -hmm. over the hosel, in the hosel, <clears throat> flares, all kinds of stuff. Those are different for each manufacturer, and they can play a point in how you square the golf club or the putter. Okay, that's just one of those things. So now, the next thing that we want to talk about is the shaft. So let's use this one. Actually, Not the yeah, I'm going to use this one. This okay. is the normal putter one. Yeah. So normally what happened was, is back in the day, when in the Sam Sneeds and all that, <laughs> and that they would have... They would ask for the stiffest shaft they could get, which was typically the uh, pitch and wedge X Flex X100, and they would put it in this, the putter. And that's because they didn't want any of this happening. Well, then the 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 industry saw an idea on how to make money, and mm -hmm. how to make money, and they made a putter shaft with the idea that it was going to be just like that. And the the world loved it because now all of a sudden you have these. Well, come on back. Come on back. There we go. Okay, so they would have these. Uh, you could you could bend the shafts. You could do the double bends. You could do all the different things that you would want, and it really worked. And nobody's the wiser. Well, now the BGT. Yes. So I know my difference. You Come know, on. you know it, right? And so this is the zone shaft, but the yeah. BGT shaft looks exactly like this. Okay, and what this is is the this is a this was the beginning of the low torque putter shaft movement. Okay, this is what brought this is what brought the attention to this. You got to see the black shafts or the white the white tops, and and it was going into uh, elite clubs or those uh, the the we call them boutique boutique putters. Okay, and uh, and people were putting very well with them, and it really didn't it really gave good feedback. Right, but it kept the thing square. So I did a I did an experiment, and I had two of these made. I made one with a steel shaft and one with this shaft. And I'm here to tell you, you would never know it putting with one until you putted with one like this. And that that putter shaft just feels like it's doing this after putting with one of these. Yeah, it's just nutty. Mm -hmm. All right, and so that's what's gone into. This shaft, all he uses, he can get a regular one, but the low torque in this thing is just a killer. Okay. Well, now that we're seeing some other, we're seeing shaft companies jump on this bandwagon, like, there, go, there goes there one, goes. like Acra. And we saw this a couple of uh, live streams ago. Yeah. Acra has putter shafts. What do you think about the weight of this thing? This thing is heavier than I thought it was going to be. Isn't that um, some? Yeah. So they have, they have four different weight categories. And it starts at a 100, goes to a 400. Does that mean it's 400 grams? No, but really close, okay? Jeez. And uh, and these things are massively low torque. In fact, that's what's in the lab putter is a proprietary shaft from Acra for low torque. If you were looking for something that didn't have that big transition into steel, these guys could do it for you. And uh, it, it is massive, it's right? Awesome. Aren't they? Aren't they heavy? Yes. It's crazy, right? Yeah. It, and uh, and it's just going to suck it up. Now there are other companies out there producing these, uh, but these are the ones that I deal with the most. Okay. And then lastly, is putter grips. So we'll start with the the standard. So this was the standard putter grip. All right, standard putter grip. If you if you look in the rules of golf, the putter grip is the only one that allows you to have a flat. Okay. This was a this is a pistol grip because of this part right here. Normally, this would go straight back, and it would be called a regular putter grip. Mm -hmm. And there, of course, several, several, several 
you know, makers make these, right? Uh, Golf Pride makes it. This is a Lampkin. Royal made it. Wind. Everybody made yeah, Wynn's got one. Yeah. And and see this one's a little narrow, and they all have a different style, much like the styles of putters. Mm-hmm. Okay, then this group comes into play. The super stroke. super stroke shows up, and Super Stroke goes well. If we get this bigger, wider grip, it's going to slow this down. And in the fact that it did, and and then they they just took off like a shot and have several other uh, styles. This one happens to be the flat so which means the flat is much more pronounced yeah. than the regular one, which would be more round. Now, these guys have done so well with this, they now have their own full swing grips. Mm-hmm. I've never tried one, but if any of you guys out there that have tried one, hey, let me know. All righty, so now to hit the market to be different is Garson. The Garson grip is just, it just the guy's got a really good story about it, and, and the thing tends to work. So this one is the the Max, and if you look, it's a teardrop and it has two flats. So that's the, so Side, yeah. what happens is, is that your thumbs, your thumbs are on both sides. So they ended up going here and here. So when you hold it, it looks like that. Mm-hmm. Now, can you go over and do that? Yeah, but I don't think that's really what it's for. Cause if you put it with the thumbs, it forces your elbows mm-hmm. in and now you're swinging more as a unit mm-hmm. and less all of this, okay? Mm-hmm. And he's had some success not only in ladies' tour but on the regular tour mm-hmm. with this one. Finau is using this guy. In fact, this in this very color, the ultimate. And what this one is again with the flat, and what it has, it's it's modified flats. This is they call it the ultimate because it can hold on to just about any yeah. any putter style, right? With the what they right call the the gator, the pencil, yeah. the overlap, the uh, whatever you yeah. want to do. This is the grip that should. Prayer, should be able to, to be able to do process. that. Yeah. So they have all that. So you have all that. So last but not least, uh, so that's those are the combinations. So right length, right lie, right loft, so that you get it. And these are all based on playing conditions. And now they have here what's, you know, and we had the zero torque. Now what we have is heavy, right? <laughs> we're going back. We're going back to heavy. All right, this is the I just opened a box on this guy today. Is this is the Odyssey Jailbird. All right, the Jailbird. I don't even take the plastic off of it. Yeah, see that? The Odyssey Jailbird. This is 38 inches long, and this is just the biggest doggone grip you ever <laughs> want to see. They call it the cruiser grip, and it's it has extra weight to it. And the idea of the extra weight, which is in a lot of cases, is the extra weight in the back slows down the the fast twitch muscles so that you can make a more powerful, more consistent stroke. It is nice, isn't it? And the, so that's where it's at, right? <laughs> and, and so once you go get fit, you, you're undoubtedly, because, you know, on the green, unless you're putting lights out at the very beginning, which normally people do not because they don't have feel, <laughs> uh, you can shave a lot of strokes off by going to that one, by going and getting fit getting the right putter in your bag, getting comfortable, having some fun, making some putts, right? And that's where we want to go with that. Oh. That was a lot. Yes, it was. <laughs> and we forgot, to, we forgot to mention Matt's favorite putter grip, which is his, what was that, a jumbo? <laughs> that was a jumbo CP2 uh, wrap. A, a, a jumbo CP2 wrap when yes. he put on his latest putter. Yes. And uh, that was making a thing. Putts. <laughs> that was a thing too, right? There's uh there's guys out there. That's what my fitting putter has, a yeah. red one, or round one, so you can't mm-hmm. say that the flat was wrong or whatever, so you can grab it the way yeah. you're supposed to. And uh, yeah. so it's not For too bad. For me, it's the thumbs. For me, it's the thumbs. On a, on a putter like this, I always find that my thumbs are not, they're not together, and with the round grip, it just goes together for okay. whatever reason. And it's just a feel thing. There you go. Oh. And, and Matt's putter is, we found out, is an what a half an inch to three quarters of an inch <laughs> taller than the cruiser. Yeah. yeah. And you so you fitted me at thirty eight. You fitted me at thirty eight. Uh, I have the Fang the seven. Yep. I have got the, the O Work seven. That's my gamer. Maybe not anymore, but I have an old uh, a heavy putter. An old heavy putter. And, that's a, and I put him next to this one, and it was what thirty nine inches. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was close. Yeah. That, it was with, close. It was thirty eight and a half. Yeah, yeah, but it was. They don't measure it the same, I no, hope. No. So, but it's a neat so, little putter that yeah. that thing is there. So, 
Very there we are, guys. That was that was it. <laughs> so now it's we're, Matt normally has the question of the question of the week. Now he can throw it out at you now. I don't have a question. Oh, I'm here. I'm here to dude. answer. I'm here to answer. Okay, we're answering questions with <laughs> yes, Matt today. All righty. Hey, it's so, my spring break. I'm no. There's no questions coming my way. <laughs> so I I posed a question to Matt here when we were talking about. So I'm in the middle of testing some irons, and uh, next week I'll show you what the results were. But the the question is for you guys new mm-hmm. for if you're hitting irons, what is the distance gain that's acceptable before to cause you to stop worrying about accuracy? Okay, so if you hit it down the middle, let's just say you hit it down the middle one seventy, regardless of the club, and and all of it. How far do you have to hit it before hitting it down the middle doesn't matter? And I don't mean shanking them <laughs> off into the trees, but I mean, so like, I mean, if you're down in the middle yeah. and then all of a sudden you're like, say, 15 yards further, but mm-hmm. your dispersion's gotten wider and maybe inside mm-hmm. or outside, yeah. at what point does that not count for you? All right. So there's one. <laughs> so what's it going to be? I think the distance of hitting it into the straight where you can see, I don't think it matters in that case, meaning the, if I hit it 170, I need to be able to know where the dispersion is at. If it goes five yards more, it really doesn't matter in that case. Yeah. But what if it goes 15 yards further? For that one club? For that same. If you were yeah. testing out clubs and you had a so choice between 170, A and B. If you went 170 and 195, club yeah. A and B. Probably half of that. Probably 185. Like okay. Something like that. So I would say 10 yards. All right. 10 yards. There we go. Yeah. All righty. So let us know, guys. Let's see what happens. Let's get started. Yeah. There's John. Hello, Jim Robin, everyone. What's the difference between parallel tip and a taper tip? Also, when you cut down a shaft, do you do it from the tip or the butt ends continued? All right, let's keep going. <laughs> if you cut the tip in, does that make the shaft more stiff? Wow, this is this is gonna be shaft 101 stuff. Yeah, let's try this. Yeah. All right, so. Difference between taper and parallel is exactly what this says. This is ta- the the taper tip will be a measured number at the bottom right here at 0.355. On a parallel, it will be 0.370. That's the difference. Now, the the little unknown rule here is normally the first three eighths inch of this tip is what's tapered. So it tapers in like this, in this part of it, and then after that, it's pretty much the same. All right. Now, the other thing with a taper tip, they typically, almost every time, will come in what's called discrete lengths. So pitching wedges are shorter than nine irons. They're Mm -hmm. shorter than eights and so on and so forth. Where parallel tip is all the same length. They all come looking like that. They're all the same. Okay. And, and so that's what you do. So typically what you would do, because taper tip only goes into a tapered hosel, and if you were to cut it, it wouldn't fit anymore. So you'd have to put it in there and you would butt trim it to the desired length. Now, if you had a parallel, in order to get that frequency you would want, you need to nibble off as you go down the shaft. So again, for instance, normally the shafts are made to start at the three iron, sometimes the two but at the three iron. So this would go into a three iron. In a lot of cases, you take a half inch for a four, another half inch for a five, another half inch for a six, and so on and so on and so on and so on and so on, all the way up. And then you insert it and then you tip or you butt trim to length. And that's how you get your, it's how you get your flex. And that's how you would frequency match. That if you would trim a little bit and measure it and see where you're at and see whether or not you need to take off any more or not. And then keep going. As you get used to working with shafts, you'll know which ones you have to take off. And that's how that would work. Now, it does as you as you tip trim here, yes, it will get stiffer. And the reason why because it gets stiffer is because there's more butt section left over. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a backwards thinking, but that's what's happening. Okay. Cool. That was that one. That was yeah. Club 101 right there. Yeah. There's Krister from a cold Sweden, small setback. Oh, you did get some snow, didn't we you? We got snow on Saturday as well Yep. in Cleveland. 
Two inches. Well, two he, inches on my house. So I don't. <laughs> I don't think I they, follow, they probably got more. <laughs> so I follow Krister on Instagram. Yeah. And he does not waste any. He doesn't waste the cold. Hmm. He did. Remember we were talking about that putt out and him yeah. being able to do it. Well, right after that, he turns around, takes two pieces of cardboard, puts his new old putter in there, and commences to plopping them into the hole in the hut out. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, the man's got touch. Yeah. Absolutely has touch. Mm -hmm. And then here yesterday, I just saw where he was hitting, uh, he was hitting on the simulator and I actually got to see him miss one. He flared one finally. Oh, <laughs> finally flared one. I, I, I was tired of him hitting welcome, it down the middle of the real world. <laughs> yeah. And finally flared one. So yeah. not too bad. Mm -hmm. All right. Charles. Charlie, what's happening, sir? Knob Creek Maple. Definitely not bad. <laughs> All right. But did have a two hour track man session today where I tested my new shafts and seat tapers. I maxed out the nine iron. Six iron two oh four. At two oh four. <laughs> Look at you go, man. That's, that's awesome. The speed, that's the speed you need. Yep. Right there. Right there. Now you now just don't flare it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'd say he's going to have that figured out in about three swings. Mm -hmm. Charlie, that's why I missed Matt's question. I forgot he was going to be on with you tonight. That's mm -hmm. right. Here we are. So ask him away. It's his turn to answer. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> My dog, Rex. Look at that. Hit the mm -hmm. thumbs up, please, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Again, I'll go, I'll go off of that. Mm -hmm. Hit that like and subscribe across the button or bo uh, the bottom. <laughs> across the bottom. And that way more of this stuff gets out to the world. Yellow ball for what it was worth. Yeah, and he actually that guy won with the playing the yellow ball. Yeah, he talked yeah. about it. it was something about his kids that his yeah. kids said he liked the yellow yeah. ball more than the white ball. That's and it. He, and he was just but most That's of it. the guys on the PGA Tour champions are using the yellow ball. Are they really? Yeah, most of them. Yeah. Even Ernie Els, he's had no idea. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Okay. Let's fix the long side of the bag. Ordered a BB Alpha 9 degree with a Phantom 50 TX speeder tour ship and OptiForce. Wow. Phenom and a, oh, a Venom. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, look at all that going in the bag. Good Lord. Okay. Where's the Acro? <laughs> the Alpha, yeah, and the Phenom. He's hitting the well. He's yeah. He loads the club yeah. so hard. All right, that's cool. Charlie, 204 with a six iron. You should be on the tour. No doubt, right? That's the speed right there. Oh, my gosh. Deuce is here. Howdy. Ryan Crow. Hi, Jim, Matt. And... Hey, Matt, look at that. Wow. Hey, Finally off working time to catch one of these lives. Hope you're all doing well. Thanks. Same to you, sir. Mm -hmm. Our friend Bill Nauman is watching. There's Peter. He said, played Saturday and shot a crazy round 44 there. <laughs> nice. All right. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Peter's got that putter working now, too. Charles, when I max it, I average carry was 190. It's still, one, that's still, still dude, great. that's pretty damn good. Oh, going to see the golf psychiatrist. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were just do one of those after all those 60s you were posting. <laughs> all righty. Here we go. Is it possible to bend a Rogue 7 wood? The no, the nozzle, hosel seems long enough to get a bit out of it. They come so upright. Yes, they do. And yes, you can. But don't expect a lot. All right. Two degrees max. Two degrees. Mm -hmm. Two degrees max. I'm going to say it twice. Two degrees max, because a lot of people come away with that. But yeah, you can do that. Okay, you got to have the you got to find the right guy with the uh, the right uh, machine to be able to do that. <laughs> Actually, right, I can. Yeah. yeah, that's why we went with the Shans because they go a little more. There you go. <laughs> they got to go a little more. <laughs> and Charlie said, "Peter, you just need that other set of irons that are out there." <laughs> <laughs> So his son has it. Is that the is that yeah, the story so, for those who missed out on that one? Yeah. So Peter <laughs> ordered a set of the uh, the ZX fives. Okay. And and with the I think it was with the either Axioms or the MMTs, 
nice shaft and put them together. And, uh, his son lives in Texas and, uh, he was just, you know, he's getting, he's getting his mm -hmm. groove going, becoming a nice young adult. And, 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 uh, he, his son, he told his son about him. He's like, man, I could really use those. And like, <laughs> and like, a, and like a good dad, he sent him out there. Yeah. And, and then the <laughs> very next week, he, Peter tells me that his boy nailed a hole in one with him. <laughs> I said, well, that's the last time you've seen those clubs right there. That's... So, yeah. Oh, man. So we made some other ones for him. <laughs> All right. There's Jack and Lombard. How are you, sir? Yeah, still tour material. There you go, buddy. My dog Rex, Cleveland Woods, Moby Irons, Cleveland Wedges, Billy Baru. <laughs> there we go. Nicely done. Can't go wrong with a Billy Baru, man. All righty. Talking back at him. Mm -hmm. There's Michael. How are you doing, buddy? Jim Anderson from Scotland. Definitely a little golf week. Very wet. Oh, very little golf this week. Very wet and uh -huh. dice art. Okay. Very cool. Mm. We got Charlie talking to Robin. Jimmy Emerson, Jim and Robin. That's all right. Very well. <laughs> all right. Let's see what chart. Let's see what Christer's got going on here. Let's see. Average yard. So the six is 198. The seven is 184. Woof. The eight is 172. The nine is 156. Pitching was 141, 48's 127, 113, 56 is the 99. 100 yard club is the 56. Okay. So what's the loft of the pitching wedge? Is that going to be 45, 44, something like that? Well, if he's at a 48 yeah. or the gap, yeah. Or, well, I forgot to see what kind of irons he had, but yeah. uh, if he's if he's figured 20 was at 15 yards difference, mm -hmm. so that's probably about a. 44 45 yeah 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 but he's still throwing it out in the oh, yard pretty good look, so yeah. what are we looking at here we got about 15 about 15 yeah. about 15, 15. Yeah. Uh, what's that one 12. 12, 12 that's not bad and mm -hmm. then another 14 yeah. Yeah. That's so 15 right, yards dude that's not bad at all yeah. that, i'd say that's a heck of a that's what you're trying for right, right? and now you got to work on that half swing mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and knock it down all righty. Good job, man. That's actually That's well good good looking set number. Mm -hmm. There we go. There's Jim saying it again. Good evening to you too, sir. Charlie saying hello to Krister again. Mm -hmm. There's Emmanuel. Hello, Jim Rob and the rest of the disciples. Sorry I'm late to the show. Been a day. Just listen in and have a great show. No problem, sir. Hope things are going well. Mm -hmm. Manuel's scary good too. Mm -hmm. Have you been watching what he shoots yeah, when he yeah. normally posts? Yes. He's all, he's scary yeah, good. Do it. Yeah. And uh he's he's like that 73 year old guy that hits a hundred. <laughs> That's this guy right here. Yeah, you know, I am only seven. You gotta give me the four T's. <laughs> Watch me out drive you about five, 15 yards. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys the uh you got to see it if you saw it in the post that, speaking of going out there, <clears throat> Acura posted their top 50 shaft technologist guys, and uh, I got selected. Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. I got selected as one of them. A uh, buddy of mine in New York <coughs> got it. I didn't see anybody else posting it up, though. Mm -hmm. uh, but he got on there. He was real happy with it. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and uh, and he, he's a good guy, too. And uh, we talk every just once in a while. So that's pretty cool. All right, Christer, they're half inch longer than standard, so I can stand more upright. Mm -hmm. Speed-wise, I don't think I get more speed because of the extra half an inch. Mm -hmm. Maybe just a skosh. It's, yeah. It'd be at a half of an inch. Uh, in, strike as well. Yeah, indiscernible. The real, pro, the, real, the real thing that you really want to look for is making sure the quality of your hit yeah. was – Improved while you do strike, it, yeah. right? It's getting in there. Yeah. Oh, here we go. The one fifties. Okay. One fifties. They're not. That's not that. They're not massively strong. No. Not like you know, like so a, it's a, be 45, a 45, you know, like a fourteen a, degree yeah. five iron or whatever yeah. they got going on. But <laughs> the forty you know. degree pitching wedges. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had so yeah. 
I had a guy from Hawaii that I've worked with as Matt Moe, mm -hmm. and he was in, with Washon. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, he posted a couple times. Yep. And he was calling me, and he was talking about getting back into hitting some Titleists. I'm like, all right. And so Matt has this ag just aggressive downward swing, mm -hmm. and swings just so aggressive, but doesn't get a lot of speed out of it. And he's telling me that he's going to hit the the 350s. I think they're called mm -hmm. 300s or 350s, mm -hmm. which is that big that big hollow body with a whole bunch of offset. And I can remember us having conversations where he would hook things off the planet. And I'm like, are you, are you sure you really, really want to go there? And he goes like, well, yeah, why wouldn't I? I said, you're always talking about hooking things off yeah. the planet. And here you are going to get this high offset. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, what would I do? And I said, go to the next model down. They're literally one degree different with no offset. You are not going to see a thing other yeah. than straight. He goes, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> And then we, and then we talked about then we talked about shafts for him to use, and so I think he came to a conclusion. We'll see. Nice. All righty. As long as you're more comfortable, more accurate with him, that's what we've been saying. Mm -hmm. Look at that thing. That he may just not, leave the thing on the floor. That thing's not sticking. <laughs> here, I'll put it over here. <laughs> All right. So it says, mm -hmm. Christer says, "Yep, he's made. He, uh, I have some swing weight problems from." From eight to fifty-two, need some lead tape to make them more heavy. No. Well, okay. Didn't see that coming. No. Here we go. Michael Moody, maybe a dumb question, but someone who is seen who who is senior has a stiff shaft and upgrade with a regular one. Let's they perform straight enough. What would be the difference? Average distance gain. Okay. So I think what you're asking me is, what's the difference if they hit it the same? What's the difference between a stiff and a regular flex shaft? Okay. All right. We just talked about that. Yeah. What's the first thing that happens with the stiff shaft versus the regular? It's the profile, right? Well, that there's yeah. in that, but yeah. what happened when remember I was telling you about the oh, the stiffer the shaft, the lower the ball is going right. to go off of yeah. Yep. So, yeah. so Michael, everything, everything considered equal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Everything considered equal. The stiffer shaft will fly lower. All right. It will fly lower and tend to, and, and tend to, you know, it'll, it'll hit and it will roll out. Now that's all good and dandy in the middle of the summer. Not so much right <laughs> no, now. Right now yeah. yeah. And, and at the end of the year when it starts getting wet again, where the regular flex tends to get a little bit more snap into the ball mm -hmm. and and it, and it gets the ball up in the air so your carry distance is going to be more right and then it, the funny part is you probably will end up in about the same spot mm -hmm. because the low runner again in the summertime and the low runner will run a lot all right but the the one that lost is going to carry a significantly further distance and then with a little bit more spin, so it won't roll out as far. <clears throat> and that's basically where it's at. Now, the other, the from a physical standpoint, you're probably going to have to swing the, it's going to feel like you have to swing the stiffer club more. I don't want to say harder because that's a bad connotation, yeah. but you, you're going to have to work the stiffer shaft more than you would the regular flex shaft where you can take it easy and get the same performance out of it. I am living that even as we speak. <laughs> All right. And uh, so I, I can speak to that one pretty good. All righty. <clears throat> Jonathan Weaver, these two to 300 upgrades, putters for LA golf, et cetera. What are your thoughts if, they really, if they're really worth it? Can't picture what a short swing has impact with a stiff shaft. Well, Jonathan... <clears throat> Up until about, what, six months ago, I was on your team, <laughs> all right? I was on your team <clears throat> because with the idea that you're, you're not stroking the putter to an extent where you would cause a lot of torque. And that thought process is true. However, when they first started making the putter shafts, putters were running around two and a quarter, 235 in grams. Okay, this is a weight thing. Oh, 
So it was in the day when these putter shafts were made. Two, and keep in mind, 235, two, 225, 235. Now the average putter is about 275. Okay. And it can go upwards of 300. Yeah, lift that bad boy, right? <laughs> what is this? Yeah, that thing is a that thing's a monster. But most of the weight's actually yeah. in the head or in yeah. the grip. So they've gone up more, and the putter shaft never came with it. Okay. And so that caused a lot of this to start happening. All right. So they found a market. And so they've got these guys again, mm-hmm. right? And the low torque brings you back. Now, I agree. $300 for a $300 for a putter shaft is quite a bit of money. For the for the weekend golfer, right? For the weekend golfer, that's all you do. You get out once a week and you're just out there to have fun. Is it going to be worth that? Probably not. All right. Now, if you're if you're going to take that next step and you want to improve, one of the best ways to improve is to knock off the number of putts. Because mm-hmm. chances are you're probably three putting a lot. All right. If you can put this shaft in and it knocks off, say, three or four putts each side, that's, that's a truckload. <laughs> right. And it's worth every dime. All right. Now, if you move it up even further and you want to get better and you start getting better and you want to, you know, you're trying to lower your handicap again to the putter is one of the easiest ways to go. And then the wedge of the short game is where you can make your most vast improvement. Mm -hmm. He is a short game monster. Okay. (laughs) There is no doubt in my mind. I've watched him hit. The dude has got the touch Mm -hmm. and how he touches playing in 28 degree weather and then playing in 70 degree weather, I have no I have no idea how that works. It's much better to play in the cold. Oh my <laughs> much god. Much better. So, I enjoy winter golf more than summer golf uh, all the time. So so can it be worth it? The LA golf shafts are pretty pricey. Uh I'm not a and they do work, I'm not a fan, but they do work. If I had my druthers, uh I would try, you know, they now there are other lower cost options out there. Uh, Maltby is experimenting one that's in steel, and the thing is a rod. It's just yeah. really thick steel. I don't even know if it's all steel. And <laughs> and then you got the Acres doing their thing. Now, BGT is another very good one, but, yes, it's in the $300 range. So you got to just kind of make it worth it. Now, again, if you're somebody that's going to take on the game in order to get significantly better, play three or four times a week, that's going to be your thing? Yes, very much so. If you're going to be a one time a week, going out to have fun, being out with your buddies, it's probably not one. That's something that's going to work for you. All right. What club do you use the most every round? The putter. <laughs> the putter. Right. Yeah, the one, two times. Uh, a, that's two. what it's scored for, yeah. right? Yeah. That's, and that's, I and I use every bit of those two. <laughs> two I'll, I'll use two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half. I'll use, three. <laughs> now I will say. Yeah. Now Jonathan, although Charlie's up here, Jonathan. Uh, I will say this, uh, I you know I'm on a I was on a quest to get down to do nothing but two putt in a round, because eventually I'm going to have, you know, out of 18 I might have two three putts, four three putts, maybe mm-hmm. even five three putts, and that was what would push me over the 80 edge, right? And and so I went with the make field in the center shaft, and when I put the BGT in it. My putting numbers, now I went from three to four to one to two. All right, one to two. When I went to this guy, which is this, it's a whole different kind of club, but again, with a, another low torque shaft in it, uh, I went from one to two to one. And my very last, and it took me a while, I won't, it's not a perfect game here. My very last round, no three putts. Very last round, no three putts. Yeah. And, and so I've walked away now when we, even when we were playing down South with Bob, mm-hmm. uh, he'd walk, I'd walk away with a bogey or something like that. And I'd go, but it was a two putt. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I'll take that. Yeah. Cause that's just mm-hmm. me getting to the green now. So as long as I can walk away with that, I've got that conquered. Now the next step is to try and one putt, mm-hmm. try and get there. Like Bob from 40 it, foot away. It comes it, down to percentages too. You, yeah. When you're talking about putting. You're, yep. you're six footers. That's where you're at. 50, 50. Yep. So if you go past six foot, you are, you're more likely going to two putt or three putt 
from that, then you are going to one putt. And mm-hmm. that's that's one of the the big epiphanies I had as a younger player is I was sitting there may, trying to make these eight, nine, ten footers. And I'm thinking, well, I only made two out of ten, but that's where the stats are saying. Right, <laughs> what you're going through, and that's the even, goal, yeah, and that's on tour. Yes, that's on tour yes. stats, not average that's golfer stat. Realistic expectations, right. is the is the idea. Like, like I like to play a lot of winter golf, as Jim jokes. You can't look at putting during the winter because the greens are at the worst that they could possibly be. Do I putt better in the winter? For some reason, yes. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's just the it's just the luck <laughs> he, of it. And overcomes in terms, the terrain. Yes. But the thing is, constant routine, go through the process, what you want to do, and then just hit the putt where you think. And if you misread it, okay. Speed dis- speed control, all those different things. Walk your Start walking your putts out. There's a lot of stuff that you can read about and all of that that you can just implement. But get like Jim said, get those three putts down to two. Sometimes that ball is going to creep in. You might make that long yeah. birdie putt. You right. might think, but it's getting that inside of that little, that inside, that inside that three, four footer, and then working mm-hmm. on those. Making that automatic. Yes. There you go. Mm-hmm. So you heard it from the man. Mm-hmm. So Charlie wants to know when assembling the, the forged irons, did you find the heads to be on the heavy side? Uh, Charlie, uh, Wil- Wilson in general is heavier than, say, the Mizunos, the Strixons, and those guys. For instance, the stand, and they're working to the old standard. So, uh, for instance, a five iron normally would run in the old standard about 256. Let's give or take one gram. So 257, mm-hmm. 255. Where in today's standard in Mizuno or even Strixon, it's closer to 252. All right. Now, if you do the math, that's a couple of swing weight points. Yeah. Right. Now, the, the other part of this is, and I've noticed this with the Wilsons, and everybody's talked about it that when you when you get it, it it naturally feels heavier. Yes, it's heavier in the weight, but the way that they have it, there's a lot more weight going on at the bottom, in my opinion, than say that would be in the other clubs themselves. So now it's soul heavy in order to get through it. But yeah, they they but that that's how they run, Charlie. Del, Mike Del Vesco, he got a wind putter grip at the PGA Tour store and had a hard time slagging on the putter. We would try with some new grip solvent, but have you had any problems with wind grips? Okay, so to answer your question, yes. In some, in the past, the wind grips, the here we go. What would happen is these guys, the, the wind grip is a two-part grip. The other underneath part is the underlisting. So that's this black piece right here. And it goes and it runs the entire length. And then you have the, the what would be the butt cap. That that makes the the body of the grip. Mm-hmm. And then what they're doing is they're putting the skin of the grip on, and that's this guy. And, that's where they and if you look, it. there's the if you can see right here, that's where they bring it around and they seam it right there. Mm-hmm. Okay. And and so they do that. So in some days, what we were ha- we'd have problems with is that the underlisting would be so thin when I go to, and that's the reason why I check for burrs. When you always see me putting on a grip, I'm always grabbing at the very end because I'm checking for a burr and th- for this reason. Yeah. And I go to put it on, and a burr would snag onto this, and it yeah. would rip the underlisting. Oh, jeez. And it would leave this big, ginormous bubble yeah. right here. Well, that grip's gone, and that, yeah. they're just they're just winning a bunch of money. Mm-hmm. So, and that was what would happen. Okay. Now, the other part is a lot of people have had problems uh, in the past with getting just the beginning part of this on, where it was a little bit small, and you had to kind of finagle it. Uh, don't panic, right? the The idea of using grip solvent is you got to use enough of it, right? You don't have to drown it but using a lot. So if you filled up the grip to say right about here, right, that, that is a lot. And you make sure you get it on the tape and you make sure you get it in here and you shake it around. Then you work that piece on once you got that going and keeping the thumb at the weep hole and then push that bad boy on. Mm-hmm. And then you should be good to go. Once you get it all the way to the end, then align it, right? Get in there and do your lining. And then the very last bit, Hit the bottom so it seats. That's just a trick of the trade. Then try that. There you go. But yeah, 
I mean, Mrs. McGough puts on the most grips in this in this corporation right here, but uh, she just but mine. yeah, she just yeah. Mine. <laughs> but that's where that one goes. All righty. Didn't the back strike also balance their putters like lab putters? They face pointed sideways. Uh the back strike. The back strike was the one that was the the shaft came in here. Yeah, it came into the back is what he's mm-hmm. talking about. So it'd be like you that. know. I think that they did. Yeah. I really do think that they did, Christopher. I think they did uh, that that they would that they did that. But it was the way that they did it was so funky that nobody liked the appearance of it, and that was the thing. But I think that they did. Now the other part of it was is that there was if you if I gave you the balance of the lab putter and the balance of the back strike, they would not be the same. It was really it's really odd how that works. Mm-hmm. All righty. So Robin's talking, 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 talking. <laughs> All right. TJ, I've been loving the quad tour taper on my blade. Yes. All right. So the I don't have the quad here, but yeah, that that's one of it. TJ, that's one of his more popular ones. Okay. That's Garson. Uh, so what he's talking about, the oh, quad, yeah, yeah, it, it yeah. Look, it's a, it's a, yes. right, okay, it, I noticed yeah, that. a trapezoid. Yeah. I think that's yes. what they call it. Yes. Upside down trapezoid. I guess it's upside down if the tall's on top or whatever. Yeah. But the, anyway, yeah, that one's a that one is absolutely a favor on tour, by the way, because it has that traditional look, but still causes you to do what he wants you to do with it. Oh, here's one for you, Ike Ernhaber, 130 mile club head speed with a driver oh, that is out of control <laughs> fast. I currently have a dynamic gold. X7 in my irons and I hit them good, but struggled to turn the ball over for a right hand golfer. I'm after a different shaft option. Okay. So, Ike, so here's the thing you really do have a, a very, very high club head speed, no doubt, right? But club head speed is not the only. It's not the only speci- or the only impact in order to pick out a shaft. And just like we were talking just before coming on, like the long drive guys. Right now, the current trend with the long drive guys, instead of having these three, five, seven X shafts, right? These seven X shafts. Breaking. They were yeah, breaking those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now they're playing. Actually, it's it's one of these right up here. It's a 140. It's a 40 gram most flexible shaft you can possibly wield. Pick that one, uh, this blue one, right? I think it's this one right down here at the very end. This blue over here, all the way, all the way in. More, 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 more. Right there, that guy. This one. Yep, I got right there, all the way up. Push it up. There you go. Feel that thing. It's a it's a weenie stick. Look at that thing. Isn't that something? So this is what if you guys were watching, you guys were watching the the Acro one. He would uh, Gavin was talking about this, and this is a a, a forty gram M zero, all right M zero, which basically zero flex. And look at this thing. You can all you can see this thing turn, and the guy the guys with hundred and forty mile an hour swing speeds are using that. They're using that in their drivers and walloping it. But it's all about timing too. Yeah. Right. So would I suggest that in your irons? No, I would not. <clears throat> I w- even as it's driver shaft. However, what I would do is uh, if you're having trouble turning the ball over, a couple of things are going on. Ike. Number one, the X7 is a little heavier shaft. So you might want to either one, lower the weight and keep in that same flex, which I don't know if you can. And the other one is uh go to the next flex down in the same weight all right so the x7s are kind of heavy so maybe just maybe the x100s might be where you want to go okay and in order to get just a little bit more snap into the ball because the x7 is just basically stiff 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 as opposed to stiff firm stiff right and if you can get into that that just that little bit. You don't need a big, you don't need a big change. Just that little bit of a tweak, 
and you might get a better feel into the club as well. That's the other way to go. From a, you know, that's a dynamic gold and true temper, and they're the number one shaft in the world, right? That that dynamic gold. And just like here over just above Matt is all the Nippons. And Nippon has a 130 that is just brutally stiff like the X7. They have a 125 that's a hair softer. And that 125 tends to work for guys with quick swing speeds. Now, they also have a 120, which all of a sudden is a very soft shaft in comparison, and the two play night and day differently. So if you want to go lighter still, maybe 115, so you get back into that same profile. So again, just to answer the questions and much more, just real quick, here's your answer, (laughs) (laughs) is something is just a tad more flexible. The X7 may not be what you need. Now, the other thing you could do is you could probably soft step the X7s. Maybe go one or two steps. All righty. Uh, Deuce wants to know, can you expand on tip trimming as it applies to fairway shafts? Well, yeah. So, so fairway now, we'll just use this one. Okay. So, again, we'll go back to the, the live stream we did with Acra. Acra has a family of shafts. He's experienced it. Yes. And so when you start with the driver... The driver has a particular profile and weight. Mm-hmm. Then the fairway wood comes in and it has a different profile and another kind of weight. And then the hybrid comes in and yet another profile and even more weight. And the idea is, is that it's attuning itself to the size of the head. So in the driver, it's about a 205, 200 to 205. In the fairways, they start at about 215 and just keep getting heavier. All right, in the and then in the hybrids, heavier so, okay, and but they they work differently. Uh, so what they've done is these different ones. So in fairway woods, if you had an actual fairway wood shaft, boom, that would be a three wood shaft, okay, a three wood shaft. Now depending on the manufacturer, uh, whoever did it, and there's only a few that actually do this, you might tip trim a half of an inch. Or you might tip trim a whole inch in order to get to the next one, three, five, seven, nine. Okay. Uh, depending on the manufacturer, you'd have to look it up. I can't say for certain that's on all of them, but I also can tell you that as the club gets, as the shaft gets stiffer, like you go into these really brutally stiff shafts, that you can get a you can get uh, a lot of action out of just just. Uh, trimming a half of an inch instead of a full inch. It'd be really amazing how what it feels like. All right. Mike's back. Something that has a stiff handle as the dynamic gold, but a softer tip, would any would you recommend with a similar weight as the dynamic? Uh, well, it's like we were talking, probably, number one, you might soft step the, X, the X7 first. And then the other one, uh, to stay in the in that same area, you could probably get with a Nippon. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, Nippon 125. Yeah. And then if you really, really wanted to look at it, you could go just into, uh, in KBS, they have the C-taper, which is brutally stiff. You can just back it down into their version of the Tour, which is actually a slightly softer version of of this right and and reality of it is it's like an inverted rifle shaft which is awesome so you could go there yeah those two don irving what do you think buddy if this is the don irving i know he's in canada uh what do you pure what do you pure the shaft and what do you think about the process I do not pure shafts because I do not have the machine. Okay. I do not have the machine. And uh, I don't know if you've ever seen one of the puring machines or no. those things. Where you... hmm. So the, the puring, what it is, is it's a machine that it takes a, a metal lathe and it goes kunk and it, uh, the, the chuck okay. and it grabs it like this. And then what you do is you put this, mechanical tip on the end of it and you leave it set there and you hit go on the computer and this thing will press down 
and it'll go tink, 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 and it will keep pulling and it's trying to find the flex. It's measuring the shaft. Yeah. And then what it'll do is it'll come here, come here, come here, come here, all the way down and measure this thing and it will give you an, an oval graph. Oh, wow. It's really cool. I mean, it's really neat if you really want to get that technolo technical into wow. it. And then it will tell you, says, okay, That's it'll put a line it'll put a line on it and say, this is how you want to orient it into the club. Okay. Good to go. Okay, so it is a neat process. Acra has the S3. It's a much more advanced version of the same thing. And uh, Hot Sticks, I think, uses one. And Cool Clubs uses one. All right. So I do the, the we'll call it the archaic version or the analog versus he's the digital, I'm the analog. And what I'll do is I'll put it in a that bearing and that bearing and I'll pull, it's a bearing about the A wide mm -hmm. and it sits here and then you pull down and then you turn it. And, it, and depending on the shaft, if it's made well, it'll go boom and it'll find the hard side. I don't think they hit, you see that line? Yeah. That would be the hard side mm -hmm. on this one. So and does Acra do that for every one that's on yes, cut like that? Yes. So you always will find a line. You can always it. find it's a good starting point. Yeah, they're not, they're but it's not, not always there. Not always. Yeah. And it, and the thing is, it's all about the geometry of the head that you're putting on. Yeah. And this is the con for the the there, there I go. It's my turn. <laughs> uh that that's the con for the peering of the shafts, yeah. is that it is that's all based on the shaft. That's okay. But when you put in a head, yeah, that's why when you the, do your the, the, the when you put the head yeah. on, that's called flowing. Yeah. And if it has a lot of offset, uh, if it's a standard issue club, say like a a blade, a mm -hmm. player's distance model, you're pretty not going to get out, out of line. But if you get in today's hollow bodies, where all the weights moved around mm -hmm. and it's at the bottom, or a club with a lot of offset, it's going to throw that off just ever so slightly. So that's the reason why I like doing the flow. Yeah. And that puts me right back in there. All right. Wayne. Hi, Robin. Jim and golf family are finally in the air. Golf's finally in the air. Heading to Santee. Santee's nice this time of year. Nice. They got uh, Santee National. They got uh, Lake. Lake South Carolina. Uh, yeah, Lake yeah. something. It's just it's just right, right over the edge. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's just this very rural area yep. that you know two two hotels and a bunch of golf <laughs> that's what it is very nice hmm. swing it christer says he's got the 150s yep southwest or northwest louisiana is only 60 what is going on down there mr wilson wow in in louisiana i didn't yeah. think we'd ever see that 71 here yeah 63 in Detroit. It made it to 74 here today on the way to, when I was driving in. Yeah. So Mr. Man went golfing this morning. <laughs> and, the wife. And, and, and how cold was it when you started? We teed off at it was 39. 39. Now the wife went with him. You got to give kudos <laughs> to the wife. She was Sal not happy. Sally was doing pretty doggone good to get out there. She was not happy. Mrs. McGolf would see 39 and wouldn't even get off the couch. She says, you are nuttier than a fruitcake. Don't do it. I'm not going. To my and, credit, and, it finished at 52. <laughs> <laughs> finished at 52. Yeah. And it, of course, it was empty, which was nice. Oh, that yeah. Was beautiful. It played 18 in about three hours. You, got, you get, get that Zen golf happening. Oh, yeah. That's cool. All right. Wayne, now the congratulations on the top 50. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Okay, what's your opinion on Ben Ross as a brand? You've just purchased one of their latest putter and oh, as a brand. Well, I didn't purchase one, but you like it. Okay, Ben Ross. Ah, I'll have to say I I know Ben Ross exists, Steve. I just don't know too much about him. Uh, I really don't now. Uh, I think are they a uh, is it a UK company? It might be, and it says it might be a direct to consumer company yeah. too. And the direct to consumer companies are actually doing some pretty good work. It's just really hard to get the word out because they don't have the marketing dollars. You need that that one in a lifetime spark, and then just jump all over yeah. it once it happens. But no, I I mean I've heard of them. I don't I've not heard anything negative of them. 
So I'd say if you like it, hey, it's all good. All right. My malt bee is 30 degrees, the 7 iron. That's pretty standard anymore. Is that standard, yeah. Well, if you think about it, on the average is 40, so the 6 would be 26, and they only would be 24. Well, no, that's actually kind of strong. That's not too bad. Mm -hmm. That's actually not too far off. Did you mention this to your people? I did. Okay, sorry. It's okay. I was gripping clubs. No, you weren't. <laughs> no, you weren't. <laughs> Love it. All righty. Jerry Wilson. Six tapes down to one. Yeah, down to one. <laughs> I know she was happy with that. Yeah. Is it normal to have different lie angles between the irons and the mid irons? Yes. In fact, it is a progressive two, or, two, or degressive. Yeah. It's progressive. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you start at a five iron at, let's say 60, then the next one, if it, and that you were assuming that clubs go half inch increments. Okay. And the lie angles follow right with it. So it'd be 60, 60 and a half. 61, 61 and a half, 62, 62 and a half, and so on. Now, some companies, uh, based on loft angles, it's really kind of different. Uh, and Dynapower does this. That it goes from 60 and then jumps to 61. Uh -huh. And then goes 61 and a half, 62, 62 and a half, and so forth to get down there. So, yeah, they should change. Here we go. Got a win putter. Well, we answered that one. Mm -hmm. Versa. Likes us, I suppose. David Bosick. What do you say, man? I've noticed the new Wilson Infinite Bucktown and Bean putters have straight shafts, no bend. Uh, aren't these face balanced? Typically, yes. Typically, when they go in there, I don't know which one the Bucktown or the Bean is, uh, but if they go straight in, chances are it's one of two things. It's either a center shafted putter or it's a mallet. And if they are, if they're going straight in, they're going towards. So the way that it would go. So as a straight shaft right here, see this one goes straight and this comes right down into the middle of the club. And hence it does that. Mm -hmm. So if there was some way to make this putter think that this shaft was going down towards the center, it would do that. The more that it goes towards the heel, the more it'll want to do this and vice versa the other way. So there you go. Mm -hmm. So there's one. And this one does it because of the bend, right? There's yep. Well, because it's, it's tricking. Yeah. It thinks it's going this yes. way. Yeah. So if you had, yep, mm -hmm. there you go. Yeah. So what, what happens is, so this one's heel mounted, but if we look and we follow this line and it comes down, down to the middle and this one does bam right there. Nice and easy. So that's how that one works, man. Sean Z, any thoughts on dynamic gold 105, modus 105, KBS tour light shafts? I'm playing 120s now. I want to go a bit lighter due to getting older. I'm right there with you, man. Uh, I tend to like the 105 weight. I think it's a more popular weight now than the 120s. Mm -hmm. I think you'll see that in a lot of golf clubs. Uh, the KBS tour light uh, the, let's see, let's break this down a little bit more. The, the dynamic gold 105 is a little softer version of the dynamic gold. The modus 105 is softer in the middle than its predecessor before. And the KBS tour light is, I would say they have a 95 gram and it's very butt soft. Mm -hmm. The 105, it, it gets, becomes a butt more butt stiff, but it still feels pretty good. So what you can what so what am I saying here? If you go to the 105, you can expect a slightly higher ball flight. All right, and you won't be nearly as tired at the end of the round. <laughs> that was the biggest change when I when we yep. when we fitted me from the one I I think mine were like 140s, weren't they, or 130s? Yeah, you were yeah. super heavy. Yeah, very heavy. And I went, we went to 110 or 105 yep. and then 110 in the wedges. Yep. And that was in the, was that the one that you built or the one you got? No, play? those are all 95s. Oh, okay. Yeah, those are the ones that we built. Those are all 95s. Okay. So if and you don't, are, if you guys forgot, nice. there's those a series nice. <laughs> called Teach the Teacher. Yep. And that's where we, he and I go through tearing apart a set of founders clubs 
and putting them back together. Not bad. Mm -hmm. All righty. Robin talking, Robin talking, Robin talking. <laughs> and there's David saying hello. Good evening to Miss Robin. Robin talking, Robin talking. That's kind of a thing. All righty. Brian B. from upstate South Carolina built up a new putter for this year that I'm excited about. An even roll. Nice. Short plumber's neck, KBS CT Tour. That's The CT Tour is actually a really nice shaft. Uh, the CT Tour is right along that idea of the low torque. It's not quite totally beefy, but it's right there. Mm -hmm. He's put out another one where it does taper down and get smaller. That could be a, a slightly inexpensive change to get to where you guys want to go. Shaft's 36 inch, great feel and weight. Yeah, nothing wrong with even roll. They do a good job. Krister, there's a lightweight driver shaft that is super stable, like a 50 gram yep. with insane control. That one I was just showing you, Krister. The uh, what happened was is that the you know all the rage was the the pink shaft. Yeah. What was the name of the pink shaft? Dang, God. I just watched all those guys because yeah. it, it just torqued the club. And yeah, the, the it, pink shaft. How does it break every time? Yeah, the pink shaft, it's made out of, it's from Korea. Mm -hmm. And there's a special way of making the shaft. And uh, daggone it. Anyway, that's the lightweight in, in doing that. And uh, so what what's happened here is, Acra kind of came out with that is I don't think they really intended on that to happen. It just kind of happened. Mm -hmm. And that's where they went with it. And they went to do that. Now, if you don't like that whole whippy kind of feeling, but you want it to be super stable, there used to be one. It was called Excaliburs and Robin Arthur made them. And I believe he's still out there and it was called the super light. And the thing was insanely stable at right at that 40 gram 40 oh, wow. 45 gram line. insanely <laughs> stable and uh and I, he's running under excalibur now so if you go look up excalibur and you find it you probably will see it was that his choice with the last name arthur yes exactly <laughs> how he played it off it was exactly what happened <laughs> And the guy was the guy's brilliant. The yeah. guy is like, he was a NASA graphite engineer. Oh jeez. And just he's the one that the uh if you go to the not graphite design, but graphaloy. Okay. Remember the the maroon shaft with the gold lettering mm -hmm. way back in the day? Yeah. He designed that. Oh yeah, he designed a lot for graphaloy. All right, here we go. Uh Brendan tried the smoke. And was spreading the ball with the regular. Sh well, yeah, <laughs> spread the ball everywhere. It just shows the importance of a fitting. <laughs> well, the regular shaft for you, Brennan, I don't think we're exactly going to be the right pair for you, but not too bad. It's, it's uh oh, number one. Here we go. Kent's back. The only time a soft shaft is any good for you, Jim. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering when you were going to show up. <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely played. Matthew Gibson, I'm interested in a forward press putter grip for my 37 or 35 inch putter. Well, as it turns out. Is that what you have in your lab? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> nope, I haven't. No, we haven't looked. Oh, there is quarter till. That and it's still laying out. Yep. So lab makes a forward press putter grip. And if you can tell, it's mounted in this one to the, for me, this is a left handed putter to the back side and, and they have to go there. Lab has them and I believe they actually do sell them on the website. You might be able to find them there. Uh, there was also one out there that actually did that. There was one before that and, and funny enough, it was called the Ford Press Putter Grip, uh, those two, but I don't think they're around much more, but I would try Lab out and see if they're, go to their website and see if you can't buy one of their putter grips. Sorry for lowering the tone. <laughs> <laughs> the tip trimming, the same for all three wood. If I want the shaft, how much should I tip it? Is tip trimming the same for all three woods? Yes. For every three wood, the tip trimming would be about the same. Yes. What we got here? I noticed the new, yep, we saw that. I got that. 
John Lamb's in. Here we go. Hope you guys survived the wind that went through Ohio. It was bad. Did you get real bad wind up there? We so the tornado that hit mm. hit about because I know you asked about it last week. Yep. I don't think I mentioned it. We, that was about I want to say forty minutes south of us. Ooh. And it didn't come. It wasn't going south to north. It was going west to east. Oh. So usually our weather goes. From from our from where we live close to Lake Erie, it comes northwest to southeast. Right. So it comes along the lake, and that's where you get your lake effect snow and lake effect weather. Uh, this one was 50, 50, 60 miles south of that and was just doing a line. But it was some of the pictures that we saw. Oh my gosh. I think it, if I was yeah. right, I heard it said it got to an F four. Yeah. I, I heard F three, but yeah. It was just it was crazy. That's what they said that very, morning. very, yeah. very yeah. Very, very that's powerful a, one. That's scary. That's. Well, here's Bob. Mm -hmm. He says, hi, Jim and Matt. Mm -hmm. We say, Bob. Hi, hey, Brandy. This is Robin talking back on that one. Mm -hmm. Both are mallets. There we go. So we did get it. All right. Okay. Ken says, Ben Ross is a cheaper brand in yeah. the UK. I... Okay. That's a weird. Matt had it pegged right there. Yeah, I knew it was. I could remember. I've seen a yep. few things about like their fitting process and all of that. All right. Mm -hmm. John Lamb says the 105 will play about the same field. Tour light, I like. Modus 105 are mm -hmm. okay, a little bit lower ball flight. Mm -hmm. And, again, it's all depending on how you – it's all depending on how you load and unload the shaft, which will work for you the, mm -hmm. in that and way. that's why you got to get fit. There you <laughs> go. Here it is, auto flex. Judd, Judd came through with this. The pink shaft is auto flex. Is that what it is? That's okay. what it's called, yeah. yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. I got to play one. The customer brought one to oh, me. A was 50, it lefty? If, yeah. Well, I, <laughs> yeah. yeah, actually it was, yeah. <laughs> as a matter of fact. And it was a 50-gram S-Flex. And I tell you what, the way that it swung, it swung very smooth. But for some reason, I could not get the face to close. It mm -hmm. would take off, and it would do 150 that way, and yeah. then 150 that way. <laughs> I could, I mean, even if I hooded it. Same way. It just would not stop. Really? Yeah. And just to prove my point, we were with a threesome or foursome. And I popped off the shaft and I had my other one with me. Mm -hmm. I put the other shaft on. I turned around and said, ah, breakfast ball. Poom, shoom, <laughs> straight as an arrow. It, so even on the autoflex shaft, there is something you to still, be said you about you got to go find yeah. the right one. 36 holes in the weekend. Yep, there you go. Nice. Well done, buddy. Excalibur Phoenix TS I've tested also the Pro. There you go. That's the ones. Mm -hmm. He's probably changed the names. <laughs> Talk to the bit hopper by flat as long as the tip remains stable. Yep, yep. that's it. There's auto that flex. window that they Judge. talk about. They want you want to hit that 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 window for each of those clubs. That's it. There are a few different ones. Yes, there are. Hey, we made it to the end. Aren't the recoil dart 90 regular shaft a smooth shaft for irons? Yes. Private stock felt like a board and KBS graphite. Max graphites are not much better. So, Mark, here's a couple of things. Uh, yes, it is for a regular. A 90 regular is for a smoother swing. The private stock and whether or not you're talking private stock for the steel fibers or in the KBS Max Graphite. Now, that one's a little different. I wouldn't have thought that, but it probably feels kind of weird uh, or not much better. So if you're looking at this, they have the KBS PGIs, P, you know, uh, not T, but P. PGIs are, are something to consider for a smoother one. And also the Acra I-Series is another one for the smoother, for the smoother feel. Mm -hmm. Staying in that area. But yeah, you're correct. Two more. What are your thoughts on Aerotech 95s? Todd Actel? Actual? So the 95s are a really nice 95 gram shaft. All the shafts from steel fiber play more stiff than advertised. So if you're looking something like Mark was looking for in the way of something more flexible that is not yours okay you need to go something down the down further down the road but they are very very nice now 
there for a while there was a consistency issue but since they've been purchased by true temper all that's gone away so yes they're a very nice shaft okay two more and we're done there's some great graphite shafts options that got the weight available now with their natural dampening effect on your hands there it is and i tried to get tgi but didn't like not the tgi p pgi tgis are boardy the pgis are very friendly all right but yeah I, I, I agree with the tgis they are very boardy they very much are i played a set of the 95s and man you had to work them hard in order to make them go the pgis you just swing them and they go so they'd be good to go all righty we made it to the bottom wow we made it to the bottom that is awesome anything I want to say something to the guy. Say something to <laughs> Thank Kent. you for having me. <laughs> Charlie. Say something to Charlie. You say something to Kent. You say something to Christopher. <laughs> got nothing. You guys are normally talking to each other yeah, while you're in I there. got nothing. No, no good right. question today. I'm, this is my off week. <laughs> All right. No good so, question, but thank you for having me. No problem. So anyway, the uh, next week we may, may not have a live stream, so I'll probably put out two, uh, put out two videos in its place uh we'll try and get that out yeah i have a i have a meeting i must attend we'll put it that way <laughs> and uh and we'll go from there so guys i really appreciate it from all over the world thanks for matt for joining us for stopping by and as always guys hit that thumbs up hit the like button all that so the word will get out about it watch for the videos as they show up and as always let's see your scores go low <laughs>